On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we've been focused on Ever Given and the Suez Canal, but meanwhile, in the southern end of Africa, instability on the Cape route has, danger, has endangered the movement of vessels because of rioting in South Africa and the potential for piracy off of Mozambique. Today on this episode, we're going to look at this route and discuss it in some more detail. Hi, I'm Sal Mercaglano, former merchant mariner, associate professor of history at Campbell University and an adjunct professor in maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. And today what we're going to talk about is the potential for instability right now along the Cape route and why this route is so important. So this is a story out of G-Captain. I'm going to give you a couple of stories here. Maersk shuts down Durban Depot as looting continues. So one of the things that we've seen here is the outbreak of violence and looting right here in the port of Durban on the eastern side of South Africa, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, the story right here is that a Reuters, uh, Maersk has shut down all its depots, warehouses, and cold stores in Durban and Johannesburg, a company spokeswoman said on Wednesday, as looting in the two South African cities bearing the brunt of rampaging crowds continue. The port of Durban has had many of its terminals shut down over the last 24 hours. However, at this stage, we have not triggered any contingencies that will cause ships not to call at Durban. Local disturbances in South Africa, issues over what is going on here. This all erupted last week over the jailing of, of former president uh, Jacob Zuma has basically caused throughout the, the nation of South Africa disturbances. Uh, we see other issues here. Go to the next story. This is from a maritime executive. Force majeure declared as violence disrupts South African ports. Force majeure is an act of nature. This means that basically disruptions are being caused beyond the control of the carriers, the shipping companies. This gets the companies out of being liable here for delays because right now they can't get into terminals. They can't get into ports to transload, offload, load cargo right now. And more importantly, we know cargo is being looted right now. Uh, we've got images of that, as I'll show you right here. This is the, the maritime executive story that talks about this. They go in here talking about that it's not just in Durban, but also over in Richards Bay. This has been going on since July 12th, and we're seeing it. This, it goes on here. The Wall Street Journal is reporting at least 72 people have been killed, while the Associated Press reports more than 400 people arrested as South African security forces attempt to stop the violence. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the, the the issues about the arrest of the former president or the violence. I'm focusing here on the impact it has on shipping, not to be callous. I mean, obviously, I care about what happens, but I do a shipping podcast. I, I don't talk about uh, uh, issues of politics. Man, that would be <laughs> that would be a podcast. Uh, go on here. Uh, this story here, Splash uh, 24-7, same thing right here. Uh, Durban and Richards Bay ports suffer major disruptions over violence. Uh, we see images here. Go ahead, play these uh, uh, images right here for you, right here. You can see the disturbances. You can see the looting that's going on on the streets uh, in towns like Durban. I've actually been to Durban. Uh, stopped there on a refueling stop on a vessel. Beautiful place. Uh, South Africa, absolutely just magnificent place to go visit. Obviously not right now, but typically uh, really nice to go. But the, the image I want to show you here is another one they have in this story that they link to. Uh, this is the looting that's going on outside of Durban. Uh, you can see them just just absolutely chaos in, in, in the area being done. But where it impacts shipping is right here. Uh, these are shipping containers uh, that are being uh, stored right there in Durban. We'll go ahead and go to the full view here for you. And you can see right them them opening shipping containers. A lot of people like to ask about opening shipping containers on ships. You can see the difficulties just opening shipping containers stacked on land, let alone if it's on a ship with straps across it, cross, uh, cross beams, uh, very difficult to do, but you see them opening up these containers, basically taking out what, what is in those containers. And this has necessitated uh, the decision by a, a shipping companies to basically hold off bringing their vessels in. Uh, on another note, this is a story from June, the end of June, which is from the International Transport Federation talking about uh, escalating piracy attacks in northern Mozambique uh, and putting in danger crew changes. So in Mozambique, we've seen equal violence. It's been going on actually longer in Mozambique, but it's been spilling out into the Mozambique channel. Matter of fact, they diverted many vessels 
out of the Mozambique Channel to go around uh, um, Madagascar and, and not use the channel. And I have the full story here for you. Let's go over the mar marine traffic and, and talk about this and, and why this is an issue here for you. Let me go ahead and shrink me down here a little bit. Get out of here. This is Durban off the port right now. So we'll take you right here to the port of Durban so you can see what, what's, what exactly is going on. So here's Durban right here. We'll zoom in. I'll zoom out here in a second to give you an idea. But that's the port of Durban. And here is the anchorage off of Durban right now. Zim Shanghai, uh, Maersk to King, and actually several vessels getting underway right now. Uh, these vessels had been an anchor right here. And so you'll see these vessels, a couple of bulk carriers right here going underway. Sea Champion, I think also a bulker. Yep. Bulk carrier right here. MSC vessel, the Gina. Uh, other vessels sitting here. They'll be sitting here at the anchorage waiting right now. And, and, and to put this in the context, again, to talk about this, this is the Cape route. This is going the southern tip of South America. Uh, this is not going through the Suez Canal, which is up here at the northern end. This is going the southern end around the very southern tip of South America into what is today the Southern Ocean. If you missed the news story not too long ago, uh, the world has officially declared a fifth ocean. That is the Southern Ocean. That is the ocean around Antarctica, just south of uh, South America, South Africa, and Australia. If you've never been in the Southern Ocean, it's one of the roughest oceans in the world. It's the only spot on the planet where the world's currents can go completely around without hitting a landmass. And so what you get on the Southern Ocean is waves that are not just large, but the, the, the period between them are long. These are these huge, long, massive waves. So the frequency of the waves is much longer. So you get these big rollers uh, where it's not unusual to literally see vessels in front of you going up the wave and then dip over, come over the top and you lose sight of them. It's, 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 it's an amazing sight to see. But I want to show you the, the, the route of traffic and I'm actually going to show it to you on this. One of the features that um, marine traffic has is a uh, density map. And I actually pulled it up here. Oh, I thought I pulled it up here. Let me pull it up here for you. I thought I pulled up the density map, but I will pull it up here for you because I think the density map is, is one of the coolest features right here. There's ship's type. There's your type capacity right there. Let me go ahead and pull this up for you. I thought I pulled it. So here we go. We removed the vessels from everything. And now what I'm going to do is right here, density map. I'm going to pull up the density map here. So you can see the, the density map here. And what, what we're doing here is showing the amount of vessels where they're moving. So obviously Mediterranean, uh, you know, a lot of places. You can see ships here coming out of the top of the Malacca Straits here, the southern end here of Sumatra and Java right there, out of the Lombok Strait, out of the Bali Strait right there. Coming across the Indian Ocean here, you can see vessels come out of the northern tip there uh, off, uh, off uh, uh, Palembang. And they head south uh, westward here, heading for the very southern tip here of Madagascar and then around the Cape. And then the ships come around the Cape, they either head northward along the coast of Africa, directly uh, northwestward there to the northern coast of Brazil, and many head over here to the Rio de Plata, Brazil and Argentina. And, and you're asking, okay, wait a minute, why are you going that route? Why not go through there? Well, one of the reasons is there's a lot of trade that goes through this area here. This is from the Review of Maritime uh, Transport. Uh, this is their. Uh, this is from UNCTAD. This is their uh, 2020 report. So, for example, one of the tables on here, I love this table, uh, talks about the movement of dry bulk goods. So, for example, steel. Uh, China is one of the largest users of steel, but they're also one of the largest producers of steel. But when you come down here to iron ore, China consumes 72%. Japan, 8%. So 80% of, of iron ore is going to those two areas. Where is it coming out of Australia? But that number is going to drop precipitously in the next report because Australia and China are in the middle of this trade issue. And where Australia is going right now is Brazil and South Africa. Those two are becoming very important. So this iron ore trade, really important coming out of the Cape route right now for China. Go here to coal. Where, is, where, where are they? Ooh, a little too much there. Sorry. Where coal, uh, again, China, Japan, 80% of, uh, oops, I mean, right down here. China, India, Japan, consuming massive amounts of coal, nearly 50% of the coal. Where is it coming out of? Again, Australia was 30%, not as much now coming out of there, but out of South Africa, out of Colombia, you see that. And then grain exports, 
East and South, uh, South Asia, Western uh, Asia. So Asia right there, you're talking about 60% of grain imports going into Asia. Again, China only has 8% arable land. They have to import grain. Where's it coming from? 25% from Brazil. That's the caper out. Argentina, 13%. So you're talking about almost 40% of the grain coming out of the world is coming out of South America. Where's the rest coming out of the United States, Ukraine, through the Black Sea, through the Suez, out of the European Union, out of Canada, out of Australia, out of Russia. So this is why the Cape route here is so important. Uh, again, it, it's not a traditional choke point. It's very hard to kind of choke off the, the Cape route. But what is essential here, because of long distances here, South Africa has been essential for bunkering, for getting fuel, also for crew changes. Now, South Africa has shut down over crew changes recently. And that has put a large issue here in, in the issue of, of crew changes. But right here, Richards Bay, again, we got, we got uh, East London, Durban, Port Elizabeth, all the way up around here to Cape Town. South Africa is a massive seafaring importance to global trade. And a lot of the vessels you're seeing here are these, these, these what they call uh, Cape Max vessels. These vessels can only use the Cape route because of their size. Matter of fact, there's an entire class of vessels named for a specific company and that's called Valmax. Vale is, is one of these big companies here. This is the Wikipedia article, but it talks about the size of these vessels. Uh, and to give you, again, the, the example here of the size of these vessels, let me come up here at the very beginning here and talk about the size of vessels so we, we understand the scope and skies. We're talking about 380 to 400,000 deadweight tons. Put that in perspective, Ever Given was 220,000 deadweight tons. These ships are twice as big twice as big in terms of carrying capacity. Now they're not longer, you look at length here, they're not 400 meters, they're not as long as ever given. Uh, their beam and draft is, is typically bigger. Uh, you're talking about 65 meters, 213 feet. Their draft is deeper down to 72, 75 feet, 22 to 23 meters. But the reason they're heavier is because you fill the entire vessel full of grain or ore or whatever it is you're carrying. So these vessels, absolutely massive. And you see right here, a whole series of these vessels being built uh, to do this. Uh, and again, look at the names and you see the importance that they have here and who's controlling them, you know, where they originally veil, now they're owned by the Chinese merchant uh, energy shipping or Costco. Uh, you see them being done. Uh, and I'll have the link here to Vail, uh, a very interesting site here. They talk about their fleet, their Cape sized vessels that are right here, you know, to cross the Atlantic Pacific, they have to uh, negotiate the Cape of Good Hope. And again, big vessels are better for the rougher seas. The bigger you are, the better you are to handle those rough seas. And, and being in the Cape route in wintertime, which again is right now, it's wintertime in the Southern hemisphere, you need those big vessels. Uh, one of my favorite things they have on here is, is, is these 360 tours of vessels. Absolutely love these things. So you get an opportunity here to see it. Uh, loading facility right here. Here's one of their ships right here, their Vail ship right here. Let's go ahead and, and follow this thing along here. And you see the cavernous holes right here. Again, these things are drawing 75 feet of water and you still have another basically probably 75 feet above the water line right there. So 150 feet, you're talking about 15 stories. And these are the, the, the grain mills right here they bring the grain and just begin to fill up these holds one of the most dangerous ships in the world are these things these things are treacherous for a variety of reasons one of them is when you're loading grain grain pours down there and you get a fine mist of grain that is explosive uh, i've been a volunteer firefighter for 20 years the closest i ever got to getting burned at a fire scene was spraying water on a pile of trash. And underneath that pile of trash was a pile of sawdust. And when I hit the sawdust with the hose, it flew up in the air and then it ignited and very nearly burnt all my hair off. That's a little joke for everybody here. But no, it was, it was, it was particularly dangerous. Grain vessels in particular are very dangerous. Even with ore, it's dangerous because the ore irregularly shaped will go into these holes. It doesn't always sift perfectly in there. And so one of the problems you have with bulkers, we see issues with bulkers all the time, is they suffer these catastrophic lists because the cargo will shift. You try to fill the vessel up as high as you can, but you need to leave some space there 
to load them. And these hatches have to be sealed perfectly or else you can get water in them. Water in a bulker is, is absolutely dangerous. You can see the size of these vessels. Uh, to get the grain out, they do the exact opposite here. They do uh, have a huge kind of a vacuum system that is at work here and uh, absolutely just amazing. You can see the grain kind of, or in this case, ore here, it looks like, no, maybe grain, piling in there, coming down. They will tend to kind of keep it a little bit wet to prevent the, 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 the uh, dust coming in there to do it, but they don't want to get it too wet because they don't want to damage the, the cargo. So you can see that grain kind of piling in there. And, and again, these vessels are huge. This helicopter spot, it's on all ships. This is in case you have to evacuate a crew member. They usually pick a spot on the vessel, which is the clearest spot, should they have to do a medical evacuation. They don't land a helicopter, although they could on that vessel, but that, that may be rated, it depends. But usually what they'll do is a helicopter hoist off there for you. And again, this is back where we were kind of looking forward on the vessel right there. Uh, absolutely massive vessels. You see how high she is out of the water right there. She'll be down to her load marks. When she's loaded, you have to load this vessel in a very particular way too. Uh, you don't tend to load one hold completely. That puts a big strain on the vessel. They'll load them at different uh, holds at different time. This thing actually moves on this track right here. So it swings over here. So you can load the different holds at different times. Uh, just an amazing process uh, if you've never seen it before. And it, it's one of those uh, uh, things that are, are just really unique out there. So the impact this has, we don't know yet. Uh, it depends how fast the violence is precluded in South Africa to the resumption of normal port operations. But the potential for disruption there is significant uh, for the movement of goods. Uh, again, it'll impact Africa, obviously. Uh, Durban is a fairly large port uh, for transshipment. A lot of cargo will come out of places like Asia, go in the Durban, be transloaded, uh, onto the terminal there and then onto new vessels to be routed up along the west coast of Africa uh, toward Europe uh, to South America and North America and across to the Rio de Plata. So the longer this goes, the more impact it has. The potential here is for bulk disruptions. China has, has shifted a lot of their focus from Australia because of the issues with Australia over to Africa, over to South America. And now this has the potential to cause a disruption for China if they can't get their raw materials that they need. China is absolutely dependent on imports of raw material to keep their manufacturing going. Uh, and again, the, the issue in Mozambique here has basically precluded some issues here. There's some danger of piracy now in the Mozambique channel. You're seeing some vessels divert around Madagascar. But again, what they're trying to do is basically go a little further out from Mozambique, get off the coast a little further. But again, this, this puts the entire southeast to southern tip of Africa into a bit of extremis. And we'll have to see. This can impact insurance rates. It could impact shipping rates right now when shipping is at a premium. So again, we'll keep an eye on this, let, let you know, and, and, and as always, try to let you know the impact this has towards you. Uh, if you enjoyed this story, you may not enjoy the writing in, in South Africa, of course, but if you enjoy stories like this, please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Give it a thumbs up so other people on YouTube can find it, share it across social media, and stay tuned for the next episode of What's Going On With Shipping. This is Sal signing off.